Western scholars are suppressing your intelligence. They tell you that their sanitized version of Islam is the true Islam. But Dr. Stephen Shoemaker has rejected this approach in his historical critical analyses of Islam. So, Dr. J, what do we mean by that, that Western academia wants everybody to say the same thing? Well, again, we're going back to what Shoemaker is really pointing forward. And he said he's walking through and he's taking us as we go through, showing how starting with Win, uh, uh, Wilfred Smith or Wilfred Cantrell Smith back in 1959 with his uh, journal study, stipulating that anything that is written about Islam must be acceptable to Islam, must be acceptable to believers within Islam. Otherwise, don't publish it, don't write it, don't speak it. That has then permeated right through academia mm -hmm in the United States, which has also had an effect in Europe as well. And that has now also then permeated our defense department. It has permeated our business schools. Everything now is uh, starting from the premise, do not hurt the sensibilities of Muslims. If you wanna make, if you wanna make friends with the Muslims, if you wanna have contract with them, if you wanna get, have defense uh, to contract with them in a new world that where they're now all these independent countries, you better not say anything critical about them and certainly not historical critical analysis. Not, don't do to the Quran what has been done to the Bible. If it can't be accepted by Muslims, don't say it. Don't write it. Meaning don't your opinion, it. if your opinion is, cannot be accepted by Muslims, don't say it. Don't if what it. you write, if what yeah. you, if you, what you publish, if what you say even cannot be accepted by Muslims, just don't do it. Isn't That's this a definition saying. of censorship? Absolutely, this is huge censorship, and it's not been done in any other field. And we've been—it yeah. almost sound like a broken record. How many times have we said it? No other area of, uh, would you ever allow this type of research to be done. It is unique to Islam. So, what is happening, and what Shoemaker is coming up with? And he's quoting from Robert A. Orsi. Robert A. Orsi, and this is what I love about Shoemaker—he brings in so many other scholars to back up what he's saying. And this is what uh, Robert. Uh, a. Orsi. He's talking about this, I need to bring everything down to one common, one common uh, model, one common paradigm. He says, religious studies itself has a long history of marginalizing beliefs and practices that stand sharply at odds with the values of Western liberal Protestantism in particular, focused almost entirely on elevating those elements from the history of religion that would provide morally uplifting undergraduate teaching. So basically, if it doesn't have, if it doesn't fit with our Protestant ideals of what is good and what is bad, don't teach it, don't write it, mm -hmm. don't publish it, or so you say. Without even I, I, here's the irony of it: he's not realizing where do you think Protestant, liberal, Western Protestant uh, morals and ideals come from? Yeah. <laughs> they come straight out of this book right here. He doesn't want to give credit to this book. That's right. But he's saying we must therefore everything that we preach or teach or even say about this book must basically, it must really parallel what's already in this book. He doesn't say that, we know that that because all of our morality that we use in the West really comes straight out of the Bible. How we treat women, how we define families, our whole moral system, the fact that this me movement, what do you think this me movement about? That women must be, uh, must, uh, must be given the last say, that you don't impose yourself on women. Where do you think that comes from? That comes straight out of scripture, that they have equality with us, that comes straight uh, exactly. of Galatians 3.8. Exactly. So you can see that all of this stuff that uh, Orsi is saying is taking that Protestant view of, of morality and imposing it on all other faith system, including Islam. As a result of that, what is the reason? So that you can, this is the kind of Islam that we want to approach. This is the kind of Islam that we want to live with. Mm -hmm. This is the kind of Islam you want to take home to tea to meet your mother. All right? And this is what he says. As a result, True religion is epistemologically and ethically singular. It is rational, respectful of persons, non-coercive, mature, non-anthropomorphic in its higher forms, mystical as opposed to ritualistic, unmediated and agreeable to democracy, no hierarchy in gilded forms, uh, robes and fancy hats, monotheistic, no angels, saints, demons, ancestors, emotionally controlled, a religion of mind and spirit, not body and matter. As you're reading this, can you see all these red flags are flying up? Yeah, I wonder if he even knows anything about Islam, to be honest with you. It doesn't matter, it doesn't matter. Yeah. This is what he's saying. Forget about what true Islam is, forget about what you've been told about Islam, forget about what the Quran says, forget about what Muhammad did. 
Let's just make sure that it fits all these paradigms that we know in Western liberal Protestantism. And let me add uh, something. I mean, this is why I want to tell my Muslim friends, if you're watching this, these kind of scholars are insulting you, actually. You know why? Because first, they're corrupting what your book is teaching, what your history is teaching, the history at least that you've accepted. And they're telling you, you can't think for yourself. We're going to think on your behalf. Now, if you're happy with this, honestly, uh, it uh, breaks my heart because many of you that I know, if not all of you, are smart people. God has given you intellectual abilities to analyze things. What these Western scholars are doing exactly what you are experiencing in your own collective cultures. You're being told how to think and what to say. And that's what these Western scholars, who are cowards actually, are telling you to do. But stop and think what Orsi yeah. is saying here. I mean, just try to, let me just, I'm just, just read it again. It is rational, it is respectable of persons non-coercive. And I say, hold on a minute. Look at Muhammad. Was he respectful of the Jews living in Medina? Was he non-coercive of the Jews living in Medina? Was he non-coercive of those anybody who stood against him? Can you see, you can't even apply this to their own prophet. This could not be applied to anything that I see in the Quran. Uh, it is unmediated and agreeable to democracy. Since when is democracy agreeable to Islam? It is as high a as you can get. Allah at the top, then you have the you have the caliph underneath, then you have the ulema, the religious uh, believers, uh, scholars, then you have the umma, which are the uh, the believers, and then you have the ali kitab, which is you and me, and then at the very bottom you have the kafir. That is as high a as you can get. And that's why it's fascinating to me that what he is demanding of Islam, if he were to look at this and ask a Muslim to accept this, he will get academics to accept it. Yes, Western uh, liberal academics and many of them who have come to the United States and have come to the West to get away from that real Islam, to get and to come and live in a very Western sanitized environment. Mm -hmm. As a result of that, and this is what Shoemaker says uh, on page 10, he said, therefore, cult contemporary Muslims may, of course, believe and insist that their faith is indistinguishable and unchanged from the religious movement that Muhammad established in the 7th century. In other words, they have to then sanitize it, and then they have to go back, and they have to show all the benign, beautiful... I mean, you've heard this all the time. All the Muslims, how lovely Muhammad was. Look how he endeared himself to children. Look how he endeared himself to women. Look how he ennobled women. You're hearing this all the time on our university campuses. You see it on our television. You see it on the radio waves. Muslim after Muslim who comes up with a sanitized view of Muhammad that I don't even recognize, and it's still certainly not that I find in the Sira, and certainly that I not find in the Quran itself. Mm -hmm. Yet any such claim, essential, uh, Shoemaker says, though it may be to Islamic self-identity, is theological and ideological and not historical. This is a theological, ideological impetus uh, that comes from a need to sanitize the man, the book, and the place so that it can be acceptable to a Western environment. But it is not historical. It is not historical, and that what he's, that's why he calls this a historical critical study. You have to have and make sure that the man you're talking about, the place you're talking about, the things that he did, the things that he said, the things that he did to the Jews has to be historically accurate. It has to be from the seventh century, written by a man who lived in the century in a place called Mecca, and by only that place and by that time. And can you see how this walk goes against everything we know about history, everything right. we know about when you're looking at a book and a man in a place, regardless of what, of the fact that there is a there is gonna be there is gonna be a backlash if you start to do this. It still nonetheless needs to be done. In order for it to be called uh, historical, you've got to do the historical analysis. So what is his solution to this? No, he's going to go into that. He and he, his, his solution is this, and he, he says it right here. Our aim is to compare the beginnings of Islam with the related Near Eastern monotheism in the Abrahamic tradition that arose from the same context. Our study advocates substantial continuity rather than difference between Islam and these traditions, a movement that is engaged and similar to the other monotheisms of late antiquity, rather than a new religion that emerged some spontaneously from the cultural seclusion of the Hijaz. What he's saying is, I'm going to do a historical study, and I'm going to look and see what was happening in the 7th century. I'm going to look and see what the people are, and I'm going to show you, we're going to show you, that when you look at Islam in its very beginning, when you look at the history of Islam, it is an amalgamation mm -hmm. of other monotheistic religions that have been brought in, that impose, that are that have been borrowed, you might say, some would say even imposed, 
to create the Islam we have today. It is not a religion that just came ex nihilo out of nothing in a 22 year period, like Muslims like to tell us, like a lot of the academics like to tell us. So that's his solution. Right. Basically his solution is let's do a historical critical. Exactly, side. and I like what uh, he mentioned about the uh, uh, the cultural seclusion of the Hijaz, which is it's almost like he's, he's referring to what you and I have been talking about. Did Islam really in general and the Quran emerge from South or did it emerge from somewhere else? Okay, now that's where I'm gonna have a problem with Shoemaker because he. I wish he would say what you just said. Nonetheless, we're gonna get to that, that's later on. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for watching. Hopefully you're enjoying this series. We welcome, of course, any of your comments, any of your, uh, maybe you came across some quotations by other scholars, uh, some journal articles, please shoot them our way because we're always open for doing these kind of uh, analyses. And uh, myself and Dr. J have agreed that we are, this is one of many books that we will start taking a journey through and making sure that first, we analyze that book for you, and if it is noteworthy, of course, we'll point to you why this particular book or any book that we will be talking about is important for you to have in your library. Dr. J, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. This is Al Fadi. Until next time, have a blessed day. Thank you for watching this video. Be sure to like and subscribe to our channel, Sierra International, and click on the bell so that you receive notifications whenever we publish a new video or go live. I would also like to appeal to you to consider becoming a Patreon patron by clicking the link right below. By doing so, you can give towards the production of these videos. There are also other options for you where you can give to our channel. I thank you from the bottom of my heart.